So today I'm going to be looking at Flux Schnell model. I'm just going through the basic settings for this and going through a couple of examples of what you can expect. So if you don't know how to access this, I'm using the replicate.com um, platform to use Flux. This is my personal preference. And if you want to know how to get started with that, I'll put a link in the description box to a beginner's tutorial I recorded a short while ago, and I'll put a card up on the screen as well. So once you're set up, we're in Flux Schnell now, which is the quickest, um, cheapest, and technically lowest quality official version of Flux, with the other two being Dev and Pro, respectively. So I'm just going to look at Schnell here on the screen. We're just going to go through the prompts um, and the settings, and I'll just tell you a little bit more about this model. So this is the default, one of the default examples it gives you to demonstrate how good it is with text. So the prompt is Black Forest Gatto Cake, spelling out the words Flux Schnell. Tasty food photography, dynamic shot. So as you can see there, it's quite a nice looking image with the text rendered really well. Um, spell everything's correct, spelling with like the sort of cream or the icing or whatever on the top, which is great. So we'll just go down these settings. This shares some settings with the other two models, but they have their own differences. Aspect ratio is um, what you would expect. Just change that to your personal taste and preference. Number of outputs is one to four. This is how many images will it generate in a single go when you press run and you'll be charged per image it generates. Um, so if you put it to four and you click run once, you'll get charged for four images. But I'll come on to the cost shortly because this is just amazingly cheap to run. Um, and this is its, one of its absolute main benefits. So let's just say I'll put that to three for the moment. Seed, we'll come back to that another point, but that's just a number that can lock in the generation of the image so that you can revisit the set, exactly the same generation again, uh, uh, providing you've got all the other settings the same. So you can kind of recall a very specific generation in the future that then you could then use as a basis to then tweak the prompt and keep re-rolling it. But it's easier for me to show you that after I've generated a few images and I can demonstrate that better. Output format, this is just WebP, JPEG or PNG. Now with these, whichever one you decide to use, if they've got compression, I would Definitely recommend going either from 80 to 100, it defaults to 80, or at least 90, because I've downloaded um, some examples of 80 and sort of um, 100 and compared them both side by side on the screen. And you can notice a, a quality drop in fine details like hair and things like that. It gets a bit mushy, so um, I would personally just put it to sort of 90 or 95. You can go to 100, but there's less difference between 90 and 100 than there is between 80 and 90, I found. Anyway, disable safety checker. Don't worry about that. That's not relevant for this. And so I'm going to just copy a, copy a prompt that I've previously put in a text file. And we're going to run this and see what we get. It's out of shape, grey British short hair cat lifting weights in the gym with a white towel around his neck. And I'm going to click run and we're going to see how long this takes. I'm not going to cut any time out of this one. Um, I'm going to just let it run in real time. The first one at least so you can just see how quick it is. Now let's have a look at the three images we've got. And I will then talk about, I mean, apart from the obvious, what's good with them and what's not so good with them. So the first one, the, we've got the cat is in the gym. He's, there's some weights there, of course. He's got a towel around his neck, but he's got three arms, uh, which looks a bit strange. But the quality of the image is actually quite good. Um, and going to the second one, well, you can see for yourself, it's tried to get the elements in there, but the coherence isn't really there. So it's kind of holding these tiny little plates with no bar in between. And well, you can see for yourself where it's kind of failing. It's getting the general idea, but it's not able to quite put the creative um, vision together. It can't seem to kind of gel it together. So if we just look at the cost, I'm just gonna, because I've not covered this yet, but this could be a real deal breaker if you're looking for stuff and you don't want to spend much money. So it says here, output $0.003 an image. So to put that into perspective, that's over 300 generations for a dollar. So you can afford to really crank out numbers of generations here for really cheap in order to try and maybe get one that does work and play the numbers game. 
but maybe this is a model that works a little bit better with sort of not as not as creative work maybe something a little bit more realistic so let's just type in or let me just paste in another prompt moody portrait of a depressed clown with half worn makeup smoking a cigarette now i'm just going to click run again and in my mind i've got this kind of moody portrait shot a bit jokerish obviously and let's see what we get wow so i really like that first one that's that's very close to what I had in mind. It's got a nice grading kind of on it. You know, the finger's smoking the cigarette or the finger's going to grab the cigarette. Nice bit of smoke. Second one. Again, really nice. I think that looks really good. There's cigarettes there. Balancing on his finger. Again, just about to grab it. The positioning is excellent. Not as keen on this one just because the hand looks a bit strange. How it's sort of all the fingers are opened out once and this skin looks a bit strange. But still definitely a very workable usable image and obviously you could easily take these into a photo editor um, I use PhotoP because it's free photop.com and you could do some small tweaks to these so if we look down so this generated in 3.5 seconds I'm going to just do one more example because I think it's always it's always worth showing you a few different ideas and just a few examples so this one is a black muscle car driving in a desert, the sky is dark with a moody atmosphere, the dust is red, and I'll put photorealistic, just, just to kind of guide it more towards photograph, because occasionally it'll generate um, an illustration style if you don't specify. And we're going to have a look at this. Now again, I've got an idea in my head of what I would like this to look like, and wow, yeah. I mean, I've only tried this in the behind the scenes, I've only tried this prompt on one of the higher end models, and it got images I like. And I have to say, looking at these, this has done a fantastic job. Um, so again, we've got the car speeding along, the red dust being kicked up, the sky's dark, moody, but it's still got some nice highlights on the car. Um, nice motion, we've got motion blur going on. Well, you can see for yourself how dramatic these look with all the dust being kicked up. I'm sure if you zoom in a lot and you spend a lot of time looking at it, you'll be able to find some little... Um, errors or details that may need a little tweak or fix but generally speaking these are fantastic images so if we want to revisit one of these in the future and we want to use the seed I'll show you how we do it go down to the bottom and it will say there you using seed it will give a number so if I copy that number and now to paste it in. Now, if I didn't paste the seed in and I click run again, I will get three completely different images. In fact, let's do that just to just to show you. So I've got the seed number from the previous ones copied into the clipboard, but I haven't pasted it in. So I click run and we get three completely different images again, which may be better or maybe worse. Let's say I wanted to revisit those exact original um, images. I could make a note of the seed number and then as long as all the other information is the same, I could click run and hopefully what we're going to see here are the three original images that we first looked at of the car a minute ago. And there we go. And the benefit of using a fixed seed like this is if you want to try and tweak little bits of the prompt and keep rerunning it, you know you're not going to get sort of complete random value, you know, randomness sort of affecting it. It's going to be starting from the original point and then iterating small changes based on you adjusting the prompt. So that's the reason that Seed exists, and that is the Schnell model.